Soren Weigert. How you doing, buddy? It's nice to have you on. I'm great, man. How are you? Doing great. I know. I'm not sure if anybody has heard you speak before. Have you made any content talking? I've made like two or three TikToks talking like months ago, but that's about it. Yeah. So this will be interesting. Get to know you a little bit, what you're all about. But I really want to talk to you about today is how you handle bodybuilding in college, because we know that you're a student, you're an engineering student specifically. But before we get into all that, why don't you give us a little rundown on, you know, just about yourself. You're 19 years old. How did you get started training? You've been blowing up recently, it happened in a very short time frame. So, you know, what's going on with you? How did you get into all of this? Well, for starters, bodybuilding. I got into that when I was 16. It was junior year of high school. I was not doing any sports. I was never in shape. I never died. I never did any of that stuff. It's just one day a friend of mine got into that. He got into the gym, into just working out, no dieting, no bodybuilding. He just wanted to like, you know, work out. And he was like, hey, Soren, do you want to come work out with me? Do you want to like go to the gym after school? It was like three o'clock. He was like, go to the gym right now. I was like, sure, let's do it. Why not? And I went and I'm pretty sure we hit like some like chest or something. And I was like, wow, like I love this. Like I literally loved it from day one. First day, came in the gym, started on bench press. I was like, wow, this is fun. And we went again and again and again every single day, nonstop, seven days a week because, you know, we didn't know like everything. <laughs> it was push pull legs. I had like a whole split going on. So it was like semi new what I was doing. But I just loved it. I fell in love with it, started watching videos, started learning my for you page on like Instagram, maybe it was or like TikTok was always like workout stuff now because I've looked it up on there. So I kind of like did my research, I want to say. And uh, yeah, ever since I just never quit. This was what, three years ago? This was, so now it's been a little over three years. This was right after Christmas break of my junior year of high school. And now I am about to enter my junior year of college, but starting, so three and a half years, three and a half years. Okay, and prior to this, did you play sports at all? Were you athletic? I was a, like, just, I just played video games all day for like, like seven hours a day, every day. Didn't really step out of the house ever. No, I, I'm curious to see if you have a picture of you. Um, do you have a picture of you prior to starting? I do, I do. I I have like very little pictures of me, or, yeah. Because I just didn't ever take pictures. Yeah. You and, just send it to me afterwards. I'll I'll throw it up here just for comparison. Because I wonder yeah, if we could yeah, see yeah. just your genetic potential at that point in time. Because obviously we know you have great fucking genetics. Yeah, yeah. When I, I think like going back to genetics in terms of that, I have pictures of me mainly the. Earliest pictures I have of myself, like shirtless, where you can actually see my physique, is like, like two three months into lifting. I don't think I have a single picture of myself shirtless before I started working out. Like I don't think so, just because okay. I didn't really have a reason to. So, you started blowing up on TikTok. This happened really fast. I'm pretty sure I had spoken to you before this even happened. Um, before you just you know took over the algorithm. At that point, mm -hmm. before all this happened. Are you, even now, are you fully aware of the fact that you have insane genetics? Were you aware of this beforehand? Did you start seeing crazy results in the gym and you were like, wow, this is, this is not normal? Did you think that was just normal progress? So, yes and no. I, like, this is a kind of a tough, tough one to answer because I was kind of, I want to say, in denial because... For starters, when I first, like, my first, like, even, like, months at the gym, everybody called me on steroids after, like, three months of lifting. Like, I lifted for three months, and then I came back to school, and everybody was like, you're taking a shitload of gear, dude. You're, I was like, what? Like, I'm just working out, like, for barely any time, and everybody's, like, calling me that. <laughs> and a bunch of, like, old people at the gym would come up to me and be like, how old are you, dude? Because I had, like, an um, even more emphasized baby face than I do now, but I was still pretty, like, Jack ish I had muscle and I looked like a 12 year old kid because right now I don't look my age but I don't look 12 but when I was 16 it's like this but even younger so you can imagine everybody in the gym was like dude how old are you like you're the most jack 12 year old I've ever seen and I'd be like oh I'm a senior in high school oh okay so I did I didn't know that 
I had good genetics or that I could put on more muscle than most people. But also, I didn't know anybody else that was doing the same thing I was doing. So I didn't have anybody to compare myself to, right? Like at my school, for example, I was probably the most jack guy after a couple months of lifting, but I knew no one else who was doing what I was doing, working out, eating right, and actually trying to put on like bulky and everything. So I wasn't sure because I, like I said, I didn't have anybody to compare myself to. So what happened to your, the buddy that initially introduced you? He wasn't training with you consistently. Uh, no, he was, he just, he doesn't diet at all. He just okay. works out. So he doesn't, his weight doesn't really change. He's probably put on like a bit of muscle, but he doesn't diet at all. So, okay. So you don't come from a school where, you know, you have a very good athletic department, I'm assuming, uh, cause you're saying you were not around any kids that were making progress. And when I was in high school, you know, everybody thought I was on steroids when I was 16, 17, just cause I looked older, right? I had a beard and I was big. Mm -hmm. oh. So they were like, Oh, like your fucking test is too high. And I guess I just, you know, hit puberty very early. But, and then also, but at the same time in my high school, there were kids that would go into the, into the weight room and toss around 315 on bench. No problem. But we had a crazy <laughs> athletic department. And this is why I also, I have a different perception on when people like say like, like you get comments all the time. They think you're a fake natty. And I just have a, a much different perception of that. Cause I've seen, genetic freaks all throughout my childhood i've mm -hmm. seen kids that could easily be on the olympia stage just by how they were throwing around weight eating hot cheetos and chocolate milk once a day in the weight room so i just know what's genetically attainable but you weren't surrounded by any of that it was kind of just you at your school dude like yeah like nobody was like if i saw a dude in my high school posting himself benching 225 i'd be like dang this guy is like Probably one of the strongest dudes in my high school. Wow. Like, yeah, no, like there was, and I, I mean, my school was like over a thousand people, I want to say. Like it was a 6 eight school and we weren't like bad at football. I think we made the state two years in a row. It's just, we just did not have anybody like, like that. I don't know. Yeah. No genetic freaks. No. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's also, I'm not sure if that even exists nowadays. It honestly, cause I was in high school. I don't even know about to be 25, what is that, seven, eight years ago, something like that, a long time ago. But it seems like there's been a huge shift, honestly, from your generation to my generation, even the generation before that. But even if you look at the generation like in the 80s, I have suspicion that a lot of those kids were just eating D-ball for breakfast every day because if you look at some of these high school weight records, if you go to high school, like you'll see on the wall, it's like the top records will be in like the 80s and 90s. And these kids are benching 500 pounds. It's like, what the fuck is going on back then that nobody's, we're not seeing this now. I feel like all those kids had to be hit on a bunch of gear because it also wasn't illegal back then. But how do you feel about all the, the gear accusations? Is it get to you do you feel a lot of guys say they take it as a compliment exactly i take it as a compliment like like i don't know if you like see but like i never like respond to them or like i never like like i gave up like i gave up defending myself or like giving myself ish well first of all this kind of is like there's like a long like i could go on about it for this for a while but i don't like putting natural like I have natural I think in my TikTok bio just because I think like if I deleted it people would jump people on me even more but I don't like promoting like I'm natural that much so I also don't like defending it that much you know what I mean so if somebody's like this guy's definitely not natural he writes a whole paragraph I have zero reason to comment back to him and be like yeah I am natural bro like who cares this dude doesn't believe me and so yeah. be it right so it doesn't bother me at all. If you want to believe I'm natural, good. If you don't, whatever. Not going to change me. Not going to change my natural status. So, yeah. You're just you're just living your life. It's not going to affect you. Whatsoever. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't care. I understand it from, from your perspective. I think if I was, I mean, yeah, I remember back then, you know, I would get comments too. But when you're the one dealing with it, it's like a, a different perception. I guess some people could take it as they feel like it's people trying to discredit their work uh, and trying to, cause a lot of people also have no concept of like what gear actually is and think that, you know, Oh, this guy's just using gear. He can look like that when that's just not the case. And it's just a try. It's a way for them to cope and try to make themselves feel better. But also they're trying to make you seem like you're being disingenuous. And I defend it as a coach because a lot of people don't understand this is like, I'm not the one claiming natural, but I know that you're my client, you know, Austin's my client. I know you guys are natural. I know this stuff. You know, I work with you guys. I talk to you every day. Like I would know if you're not and you know, I'm running a business. So if people come at me and they say, 
you're lying. He's not natural. Now it's not just me defending it. It's like my integrity of the business. Am I lying and putting, you know, that, that jeopardizes my whole business. Am I a scumbag who's just trying to fool people that they could get these results because I have this kid and he's saying he's natural when he's really on gear. And it's like, that's not the case. I'm just showing you the, the, the reality here. And I have, to, I don't have to defend it, but I just don't like it because it, it, it feels like there's a lot more on the line when people come at you and it can ruin the reputation of a business rather than just one guy not agreeing with you. You know what I mean? Dude, no, actually, now that I think about it, like, yeah, that's way worse if you're actually trying to like promote stuff. Cause like me, for example, like I don't do coaching or any of that stuff. I'm not a coach at all. So I don't really get much for saying I'm natural, except like Dude, this kid's natural and he's Jack, check him out. But if you're like, like you a coach and that's like your stuff, like, getting people in better shape and then people are like oh well you're just putting them on grammar yeah. tests or whatever you're it's putting like, kids on gear it's like yeah. no no you can't fucking oh, yeah, say that. About it like that no and that's like yeah, the whole true. legal problem too i'm not i'm pro it's probably honestly uh what's the word what's the word when they you know try to tarnish somebody's reputation from a business standpoint uh, yeah, from, yeah, a, I know what you mean, from, but, from a legal yeah, no, standpoint Wait, wait, wait. I can't remember. I can't remember the name of the word, but it's, uh, I, I just don't, I don't like it. Cause I know you guys and I know you guys are doing it. And I'm also, I'm also the first one to say that like, Oh, you the, you guys that have these crazy natural physiques that you guys have crazy genetics. And I make this clear, like I'll show plenty of my clients that have, you know, normal genetics. And I love to show guys and their weight loss transformations and things that are probably a lot more realistic for the general population. But also I'm going to showcase guys that have crazy fucking freak genetics too. But then people take that as, well, you're trying to show everybody that they could get these results. I'm like, no, like you're not going to look like this, but this is still my client. And I'm going to show the transformation because it's fucking sick. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it's going to happen for you, but also at the same time, you're, I'm not going to let you sit here and say that I'm lying and trying to sell you on something and that I'm putting kids on gear. Uh, but, it, you know, it's, some people, there's a lot of these people, there's, there's no way to talk to them. It's like talking to a wall and people are going to believe whatever they want at the end of the day. So it's kind of just a dead yeah. end. But yeah. no, how... How have things changed from? Because we've been working together for since what the beginning of this year, right? Yeah, the, like early January. Early January, yeah. So basically, beginning of two thousand twenty-four. How have things changed for you from pr what you were doing prior to what we're doing now? Obviously, from the time that you've started with me, you have grown like a weed consistently. Like you, you've yeah. like it's just been nonstop, steady progress. Body composition is staying in a great spot. We haven't had to pull down. Just smooth sailing for the past six, seven months, whatever it was. How have things changed from what we're doing now to prior? So the biggest one that was for me, well, not to adjust, but to, for me to like be like, this guy's my coach. He knows a lot more than me, so I'm listen to him and do change it up. Is my split like going from because I was a a huge push pull legs. Like I like I really like doing the split, and I did it for especially because it worked for me, but switching to a more, like the bro split, what I'm doing now, I, I found, first of all, better result from it. It's just, the enjoy I get a way better enjoyment, I'm not gonna lie, from doing a PPL. I just love that split so much, but I get better results from bro split, and that just shows like, sometimes you just gotta like, not second guess yourself, but you gotta like, learn to learn, you know what I mean? Like, learn that there's just people that just know more than you and that just, like, you can learn from. And actually, even if you, like, think that something is, like, you're doing it right and it's working, there's always a way to, like, grow with change or something like that. And that was, like, the biggest thing for me. Like, just being, okay. like... Yeah, have you seen yeah, more progression with this type of training? You're saying, like, have you seen specific yeah. muscle groups, you know, respond better? Yeah. Yeah, 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 my my shoulders, for example, because like my shoulders would always be like on a push day, so I would always train them like not like half ass, but like it definitely wouldn't be as much like attention. I don't think I'm getting as much growth from a push because of like the amount of volume that I had in my push, rather than just hitting them like dead on. But I would have never thought of doing something like that just because such a small muscle group. But now I'm getting like the results, and my strength is going up, and my presses or my stuff like that, like from the shoulders, and I'm just like. Yeah, like that was a good move. How about your uh, your diet? What were you eating like prior to this? Was it kind of the same? My diet didn't really change. The only thing that changed for my diet is just if it fits your macros, but with the same things that I'm eating now, 
whether just meal plan because I was pretty much eating the exact same things pretty okay, much. So, like so, pr prior to this, you were just following you know a macro approach, but you were still making quality good decisions within that. You weren't just eating you know yeah, shit yeah, here, yeah. protein pancakes. Yeah. You were having like actual whole foods. Very rarely, so I did eat protein bars like once. I'll have I had like a protein bar a day or something like that, but but just chicken, beef, rice, and oatmeal and stuff like that. Just always. And yeah. I was also, one of the biggest thing is, um, I always got like 300 to 350 grams of protein a day. Like, mm -hmm. Always. And that's uh, what I still do now or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it's at now, but it's something like that. We're definitely, you know, at least close to close out 300, if not higher. I had to look at the plan, but yeah, yeah I would, I would, I wouldn't bring you much lower than that for sure. But you see, you know, it works. It fucking obviously works, right? Yeah. Everybody wants to, everybody always wants yeah. to debate that, but the proof is always in the pudding time and time again. Um, and then tell me about your, uh, your experience with school now, right? You always hear people say that they can't get stuff done because they're in school. They, it's too hard with all the homework that they have to do. And I, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of work to do. I remember, I mean, I didn't go to college, but I remember in high school, like I was in honors classes. I remember that alone was a good amount of work. So I can only imagine fucking college. Uh, but you are on point. Like you get everything done without hesitation and you're an engineering student as well. So if I'm not mistaken, engineering students have more work than the average student, no? Yeah, I think so. I've only been an engineering student, so I don't know, but I'm guessing that, yeah, we do. Yeah, so... You're, you're giving a good amount of work, even if it's not like the most, maybe not as much as like med students. I don't fucking know. But how do you balance getting all this done, getting to the gym, doing your cardio, right? Like what is what is the secret here that everybody's not able to nail down? So the secret secret for me is just a matter of like how bad do you want it, right? So I don't want to. I want to say that I prioritize bodybuilding over like literally everything, but I, I do try to find like a good balance. It's just for me, like, for example, when I make my schedule, like I make my schedule like for classes and stuff or like when I'm going to study, I don't go, here is my school schedule. How am I going to fit the gym into this? I think of it like, here's my gym and eating schedule. How am I going to fit my school schedule into this for me? So like, I don't, like, it's just like my life revolves around that so much that like the gym that it's just natural to me to just put that first. Like, it's not, oh, I have so much homework. I'm not going to go to the gym. It's how am I going to do this homework after the gym or while still going to the gym? I know I'm going to do it. So it's not really like a question for me in my head. It's just like, I'm going to do the gym and I'm going to do my homework or I'm going to do my homework then I'm going to do the gym. It doesn't matter what my homework is. I'm going to get the gym in. I'm going to get my meals in. I'm going to get my cardio in. It's just, yeah. It's just the order of priorities. And yeah, you're not saying that you just... necessarily prioritize school more, but it's just, you know, having having a plan of action and sticking to it. I think a lot of people do look at it the opposite way. they like, I have my class schedule. I have to do my homework. And then the gym comes last. Gym is last priority. And that's never going to, it's never going to work for you. You know, the gym, has, it should be just like brushing your teeth. It has to be something that's part of your life. Like it's not even an option. It's something you have to do every day one way or another and whatever is most conducive to your schedule. What have you found to be the most conducive with your schedule? Do you typically, are you training at night, the morning? You know, obviously everybody's class schedules are different. I, so I like having most of my classes in the morning, going to the gym right after and then doing my work later. And this is actually like the only thing that the only place where it has caused somewhat of a problem for me in terms of like school and like gym balancing is it's hard for me to start doing homework unless I've gone to the gym, which because like I'll know I'll have like if I know I have to go to the gym and I will, I have to like go then do my homework. I can't just like sit down and do homework because then I'll just think I'll just think about the gym. I'll just like, I'll just be like, all right, I got to go to the gym. So I just always go to the gym and do my homework. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, just what you want to do the yeah, most is always on your just, mind. Like the best part of my day. Like it's just, I love it so much. Like, yeah. Now when you're doing work, do you find it hard to like stop and then go to the gym? Because I know when I personally, like I like to go to the gym before I even start working for the day normally, because once I start working and doing all my client stuff, I get into this flow state. 
And it's like, I don't want to stop that and then leave now. Like, I'd rather get everything done before that and then, you know, be able to just completely focus in on work until everything's cleared out. And that if I do that first, that might not be done till 6, 7 p.m. And now it's 6, 7 p.m. And I don't want to go to the gym. Now I fucking feel tired. You know, it just doesn't feel the same. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. But, yeah, no, for me, it's just, like, I don't, I don't want to say that I don't get into that flow state. It's just, like, I look forward to it so much that, like, I could go, or, like, I could, if I work till 9, even if I have no energy, I'm probably still going to be like, oh, yeah, it's time for the gym. Like, like yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess because I'm, like, relatively new to it, I guess, three years maybe. But I still enjoy it so much that, like, somebody hits me up at midnight and is like, let's go to the gym. I'll probably be like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. It probably is because you're new. Because I remember those those times we would literally just go in the middle of the night all the time. It's just like the gym is great. Mm-hmm. Fucking love love going to the gym more than anything. And I do love the gym, obviously, still to this day. But you know, it's a uh, it, it gets different as as you get older and get more experienced. Now, with that being said, you're when do you turn twenty? August. August. Okay. And you're in your sophomore year of college. Uh, I just finished my sophomore year, so I'm going to be a junior in August. Okay. And how many years left do you have for you to be done with what you're trying to accomplish? Just two, only two more. Okay. Now, w- everything started popping off for you on social media around what time frame? Ooh, September of last year, I want to say. Okay. And has that changed your life at all, really? Oof, yeah, I mean, yes. Yes. Um, Like... Kind of. It hasn't really changed my routine. Like, in terms of that, like, even if I wasn't on social media whatsoever, I would still go to the gym the exact same and diet the exact same, right? It just changed in the matter yeah. of, like, you know, when I go to a gym, in a college gym with a bunch of college students, I get recognized a good bit, right? Because, like, you know, those are literally my, the, my target audience is literally probably those people from, like, 16 to 22 who go to the gym. They're my exact target audience. So I get recognized a lot, I guess. And that's cool. I mean, like, that's, that's awesome. But in terms of like profits wise or revenue wise, I want to say, I mean, like, obviously, yes, there's like a good bit of like, you know, money to be made or you can make like stuff like that. It's just so far, it hasn't really changed much in terms of that. I don't think I've literally, I don't think I've spent like over like a thousand bucks of the money that I've made. Oh, yeah, yeah yeah i mean that's that's great but like you said you're i don't you said you've talked like three times i feel like you also haven't really you kind of just are fucking around with this i feel like you don't really make an effort like you're not trying to monetize or sell anything you're not even really trying to grow a page it seems like it seems like you just hit the algorithm and your shit just starts popping off every, every time you post now yeah no i mean that's a pretty good way to say it. i it's not and that's that's like a lot of people go up to me like yo but like what are you doing? Like, you know, you could be making like so much like more money right now or just probably like going even more or like post more. And I get like, this is a really like, first of all, this is like a really cool opportunity I have, right? Like I have, like I'm grateful for it and everything that's going on with me. It's just posting isn't like, or like social media in general is like not my thing like at all. Like, and I, I mean, I think I've made that obvious, obviously, right? With like my content and just like, how much I post because I just, I mean, I personally don't like posting like, and I'm, but I'm still like, it's not like I'm like complaining about it. Like I really thankful for like everybody that follows me and like the opportunity I have and everything. Like it's, it's awesome. But I actually don't like posting like at all before I was on social media and did social media. I literally never, ever posted a picture of myself online ever or took a picture of myself pretty much. So it's just like not, my thing so what is that attributed to is it you don't like being on social media in general like you don't just don't like social media or you just don't like you know putting the effort into like make content and that stuff like you have no interest in it yeah um i think it's like um how do i put that it's not that i it's just not something that i enjoy or like that i enjoy putting an effort in do you know what i mean like, it's not like I'm just like, oh, I got to post today. Don't want to do that. Like, I'm lazy. I can't be. But it's just like, 
I don't like I don't have the drive to want to put an effort in and to like pursue it like that much more you know what I mean yeah yeah, yeah. well you've amassed how many you have like almost what 500k on Instagram something like that I'm, over like, 400 yeah, I think mid fours something like that what about on TikTok? What are you at? Do you know? Mm, like big threes, maybe low threes, 300 something. So you start popping off even more on Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, it's definitely because wow. Instagram okay. is way more like physique based, you know, like just not really personality. And TikTok is more like yeah. a personality thing. Like, yeah, Instagram is all about flashy you know highlight lifestyle that? post your physique you, it's not like you know i could post a video like the videos where i'm posting on me walking around on tiktok like i post it on instagram it's not even going to get you know one tenth of the engagement that shit just doesn't flow well on there on tiktok you do that stuff it's like you know people more people feed into it mm -hmm. uh and it does better so so that definitely makes sense now you have these opportunities and you say you don't want to have any interest in it so my question is like you're still going to pursue engineering at the end of the day right like that's your goal mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you have no interest in like trying to make a career in this industry from a social media aspect uh, so i don't think because I, would... I think a lot of guys in your position would drop out of school right now oh uh, yeah. yeah 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 it's just it's not that uh well first of all i, I could never do that because first of all like of my parents my parents were very like yeah like you're gonna go to school like you i don't care what how well you're doing this you're gonna go to school and i respect them so much that i'm gonna be like yes hundred percent but yeah I just it's not that I don't want to like make a career out of it necessarily it's just I'm gonna keep doing it right like I don't like there's parts that I enjoy obviously like it's not like I'm like I hate it so much whatever I enjoy I can enjoy it sometimes like it is it is nice so I'm definitely gonna keep posting and maybe one day pursue it more it's just as of now it's not right now. I don't want to like take it to the next step. We'll say, but maybe one day I'll be like, okay, let's maybe try and make this like a career, make this like try and do something else with it, or take it a step further. It's just right now I don't really want to. Alrighty, I hope you guys are enjoying today's episode of the podcast. And if you are, you know what to do: drop that like, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Any questions, drop a comment down below. Anybody you want to see come on in the future, let me know and I'll try to make it happen. And before we get back to it, just a quick reminder. Hey, 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 hey. Calm down. Don't be acting up. If you order anything from HD Muscle, make sure you use code SEB to get 10% off any order. Now that I am cleared to start PT after having my spinal canal thoroughly investigated and torn apart to remove the pain that I was experiencing for eight years, I will be implementing some supplementation back to my protocol now that I'm able to train again. And of course, it's going to be HG muscles. So make sure you guys use code set when you check out. And uh, I appreciate all the support, but let's get back to the podcast. So where do you really, I guess, I mean, I'm not sure if you even know, you're still only 19. Where do you see yourself in five years from now? Good question. It's a good question. Um, hopefully, hopefully, with an IV pro card. <laughs> nah, hopefully, still doing bodybuilding. You know, hopefully, my mind should change on that. Um, graduated. Hopefully, got my master's as well, and I'm working a job. Yeah, just a normal job. I want to, you know, work a normal job. Maybe do something on the side too to get more money. But I don't really know. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You're just you're just playing it by ear. Yeah. You don't know. Okay. So as far as bodybuilding goes, I know you previously we t we talked about competing. Uh, we're gonna hold off for a year. We're gonna continue to grow and then enter prep. Um, but you said you have aspirations right now, like to become a pro. Now, is that like really something? Is it just kind of one of those things where with like the social media thing, it's like ah, uh, you know we'll play it by ear and we'll see how I feel. Or are you really set on, I want to go pro. I want to be an Olympian competitor. Like that's something you really want to do. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's 100%. I want to be a pro. Like if I could be in the Olympia, geez, I mean, yeah, hundred percent, but getting my pro card is like something I want to do like a hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a big goal yeah. of mine. So with that being said, since you're still natural, 
at some point in time to do that you obviously know like you're gonna have to switch over to the dark side uh take the enhanced route yeah. um but we also did talk about that too that you don't even want to consider that until you step on stage right mm -hmm. to see how yeah. you feel about competing yeah. because if i right now i want to get my pro card right i think competing is going to be amazing right but i've never done it so here's the thing if i do my first show get on there naturally and i absolutely hate it or i don't like it that could 100 percent change my mind because if you're good, if you don't like competing or everything that comes with it, you're not going to try and be a pro with that. Right. Like that's just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. So until I do my first show and I'm probably going to like it. And if I do like it, that's where I'll decide like, okay, like, yeah, this, like I want to do this. Like I want to pursue this even more. So, you know, probably going to take it to the dark side or something like that. Yeah. So with where your head's at right now, you don't think, uh, you would even consider using PEDs unless it's for the reason of competing. Like you wouldn't do it recreationally no, just no, and not compete. No. Recreationally, <laughs> I would not do steroids, no. How do you feel about that? How do you feel with the guys that use gear and don't compete? <laughs> That's just like why. I just don't really see the point, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah, getting jacked, obviously, <laughs> but like I just don't think it's – I don't want to say it's not smart. Like, right, you do every, whatever you want to do. If you want to do it, like, just fuck it. You only live once. You want to take steroids recreationally, go for it. I just don't think it's a good decision if you're not competing. Like, you can get a you very know, the, good The risk is worth it. Without PEDs. So, I just, yeah. Yeah. Risk isn't worth it, in your opinion. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, so, now, you don't have, a, like, a full-time job or anything right now, no? I've actually never had a job. Really? Um, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, That's I'm really good for you. I mean, not. Yeah, I have a, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. So now you, you're you're able to make a little bit of money on on social media. Mm -hmm. That's uh probably helping you out a bit. Um, have you been approached by a lot of companies? Have you turned down offers? Have what, what's been going on by that? I assume a lot of people are in your inboxes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially like when I was like first coming up. Right now it's like less, obviously as I have more like, you know, kind of just not going so much more, but like as I was first growing, it was like a lot. And I had like, yeah, it was a lot. But I did pick out sponsors. I did get like my two like main sponsors pretty quickly. And once you get those sponsors, it's like more of a, you don't really get hit as much. Cause like, well you do, but just not yeah. as much. So yeah, you don't really get so like, I got I got to pick pretty much the two main ones that I wanted before I even started body uh, me bodybuilding before I even started social media pretty quickly enough to where other like other ones didn't even like bother. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So tell me about some of the things that you have struggled with in regarding bodybuilding, whether it's eating you know, progressing in training, you know, organizing your life. Cause again, you know, you hit the mark every week consistently, pretty much, you know, you're always on point, you, your appetite, you never really tell me like you can't eat or anything like that. So, you know, what, are there any things that you really have found, uh, any issues you've come across even, you know, whether there was before working with me or whatever, uh, that you've learned to overcome and, and how you went about that? Um, so I, so I don't know how to put this, but I don't really, like, I've never really faced any, like, like, struggles. I'm, I don't know. I don't really know how to put this without sounding like a, like a douchebag, <laughs> but I've actually never had any struggles in terms of that, like, physically, even when I'm, like, I don't know what it is with me. I, for, I can eat as, like, a lot. I can put down a lot of food. I don't really get hungry even when I'm, like, cutting, like, ever. I could be on 1,500 calories for, like, weeks when I was doing it last summer and I like wasn't really hungry ever. I don't know what it is with me. I just don't really, I don't know. I just don't really struggle with any of that. It's like, yeah, it's so like, even right now, are you, what are you going to say? I don't know. Like, I don't know how to put this without sounding like, oh yeah, look, like super cocky or like, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. I just don't have it, never struggle with anything no, like that. It's just, it's just the truth. It's, it's come easy to you. So with, where we're at now, you're eating around, you know, like 4,000 calories on training days, a little like, you know, around 3,300 or something on off days. But 
um have you prior to prior to this when you were doing things on your own were you consuming this much food as well i i used to eat more than that i think really yeah, my first like the heaviest cause the heaviest i've been is like 210 i want to say and i was eating i was pushing a lot of food i think i was probably in the upper fours like what was the like insane amount but it's like seven, probably like seven hundred more than I'm eating right now. Yeah. Yeah. How were? You, how did you look at that point? I was pretty. I had a little more body fat than right now. I want to say yeah, I was probably like low twenties, maybe, maybe like twenty one percent body fat. Low twenties. That was pretty. That's pretty fucking high. Yeah, I was pretty. <laughs> maybe, maybe like nineteen twenty one. I was a pretty. I was pretty big, but I was chunky. Yeah. Yeah. Do you keep up with bodybuilding? Do you follow the sport? Uh, yeah, a, a good bit. Nothing like, I'm not like super into like, like I don't know like every pro or like something like that. But I, I follow like the main events, we'll say. Because uh-huh. you said, you know, you got introduced to it, you fell in love with it, you started researching. Like when you started getting into this, were you more so like just looking at the information side of things just trying to learn about how to build muscle or were you also looking at you know the competitors and you know watching the olympia the arnold the new york pro all these things Mm -hmm. uh and were you like finding guys where you know you see chris or you see ramones people like that you're like i want to look like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just like that i was like i want to look like this guy i um so my senior year of high school is like when i really got into it i was like people called me sebum but not because i looked like sebum they call me sebum because all i would do in class is watch chris bumpstead videos so like yeah Yeah. i know yeah or like i would just watch like bodybuilding videos in class or like and it would be it would be funny because like i would watch like so it would be chris bumpstead working out like somebody else working out and they would be like in a tank top right so it would just be like rip guys working out and i would watch it like in class and everybody walk behind me like yo what what are you watching bro like like what are you what is this um, and it was just like it was funny they call me uh creatine in high school creatine <laughs> yeah so all the the teachers and the, and the coaches would call me creatine really the teachers too <laughs> yeah That's yeah funny. fucking <laughs> yeah it was a uh, it was it was funny but i mean i would always, always have conversations with the teachers like um, especially like the the PED, not the PED the teachers, PED the teacher PE teachers, <laughs> the, yeah, physical education teacher, uh, performance enhancement drug teacher, mm-hmm. uh, like just about training and all this stuff. And you know, I would like have debates with them on like the best way to go about training and stuff. And it, it was just funny, but yeah, man, where are you? Are you? You're based in. You're. I know you're an hour behind me, so you're in Central uh, America, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm in Alabama. You're in Alabama. Mm-hmm. Oh shit. Yeah. I feel like there's nothing in Alabama. What's it like over there? You're right. You're right. There's nothing there. Like, I mean, there's the beach. Yeah. yeah, that's where you grew up. That you're still in school in Alabama too. Yeah, I'm in Auburn. Okay, so you haven't left. Do you want to leave? Um, maybe, maybe. I'm not. I was actually talking about that earlier with my like my parents, and I was like, I don't really know what I want to do after like where I want to move, probably not stay in Bama, I probably want to go some, like, maybe, I don't know, I like Texas, maybe Texas, something like Florida would be cool, I know you live, didn't you live in Florida? Two humid fucking places, yeah, yeah both humid as fuck, yeah, that's true. and probably humid in Alabama, yeah. too, yeah, 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 actually, yeah, but I, I like it, yeah, I like, I like humid and hot, the weather, I prefer it like that, yeah, yeah, so, I'm not sure if you want to share this, if, it, if, it, if you're, allowed to i don't know but uh you you're only 19 you don't you know sounds like you don't know a lot you're just riding riding out which is obviously fine you still got all this time but how do you uh do you use like any recreational drugs do you smoke do you drink at all do you stay completely away from this stuff have you ever done any of those things i am i don't smoke ever i don't drink ever yeah well that's a, no ever i yeah. have drank before like i'm i'm french so drinking is like not nearly as big of a deal as they make in the United States, right? Like ever. Mm-hmm. Like, my first year I had my first beer when I was like 12 or something. It's just like I don't do it like like I've never been drunk before. Like ever. Yeah. Wow. Like, never got into that. 
ever or smoking never vape before i've never gotten to that ever yeah it's great it's terrible for you horrible yeah. don't well, ever do it i remember like my first like two and a half years in high school i was like playing video games all day in my house so like i didn't really ever like you know go out or do stuff like that yeah we have a uh, vastly different experiences yeah. it started i was hanging out with uh heroin addicts when i was 11 years old a lot of them are dead or in jail now yeah, uh you know i was i looked older when i was in high school so i was getting into bars when i was 17 years old so Jeez. by the time i was 21 it was like i'm already i'm already over this i've already been through it if i'm trying to go to the bar like in goblin it's like boy they're not letting you into the bar you're not getting into any bar yeah, yeah, I <laughs> Give him my idea, like, dude, this is, this is real, and I'm still taking the under. Like, this is a real, and I'm 19. It's like, am I your 15? Get out of here. Uh, nah, but that actually has something. Yeah. Bodybuilding has helped me there, because, like, I may not look, like, from the neck up. I may be, like, look 16, but, you know, I'm a 200-pound mm -hmm. guy, so, like, it's believable when you see my body, I think. I hope. Wait, you're 5'10", 5 5'11"? 5 I'm, like, 5'11", I'm going to say, yeah. Maybe 5'10 and a half. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, same shit. Yeah, whatever. When your shoes like in five eleven and a half, so practically six foot. You're six foot. Yeah, yeah. Six one. Six one. Yeah. Basically. Pretty much. Basically, right? Yeah. Now, you don't live in a dorm, right? You still live at home. You're you're close to your house, right? Obviously. No, 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 you're no, no, no. In a house I'm, right now. I'm in an apartment, like far from home. You're an apartment. I'm, like four hours from home. Okay. Yeah. Now, you find it easy when you're. How do you approach? eating with school right do you cook your meals throughout the day or do you prep everything for the week what what do you what do you do when it comes to that i i cook like throughout the day like just throughout yeah, the day I, all your bills yeah, yeah yeah i have like a kitchen because i'm with, i'm like in an apartment sometimes don't even have kitchens i don't know how people do that i just got my kitchen pan i need to cook cook clean eat back to it two hours later just do that yeah i don't really prep anything I used to, but no, I don't. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's interesting because you would think with you being so busy that you wouldn't want to cook all throughout mm -hmm. the day, but you seem yeah. to be fine, fine doing that. Yeah. No, I mean, I, 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 can also, I, sometimes I like, I'll do my work while cooking. Like I'll have like something pull up on my phone and just like study something while I'm cooking or something like that. Cause it's pretty easy. I don't really like my cooking is like, so you have to eat eight ounces of chicken. I'm going to put chicken in the pan and I'm going to let it cook for like 20 minutes put some salt and that's it yeah that's it that's a good point i think a lot of people do over exaggerate like how hard it is to cook not to say that everybody can cook throughout the day like mm -hmm. people everybody has different schedules people have to go to work and shit but mm -hmm. you're like oh i don't have time to cook like, i can't prep my meals it's like it's like you can get other shit done while you're cooking you put something in the pan you put it in the oven there's like ways to you know where you just put something in you don't have to watch it and you pay take it out and it's done people act like they have to be attentive to cooking and it's going to take like four hours of their day yeah. to be able to follow a meal plan and i think it's really just comes down to an excuse and them trying to to cope yeah no literally like no oh, rice what you gotta do with rice dude don't even put it rice dude, i gotta cook rice huh. i can't do my homework right now like what <laughs> <laughs> Just put it in there, let it cook, and then come back 20 minutes later, you're good, bro. Like, yeah, no, it's, it's not a big deal. Cooking doesn't get in the way of anything. Yeah, no, that's hilarious. Now, do you bring your meals to the class? Ha, <laughs> okay. Nine college. Nine college. But in high school, yes. In high school, I used to... You were getting trouble for it? No, my teachers were like, they knew what I was doing, so they, they wouldn't care. Like, they would let me eat it in class and everything. Or like, and at lunch, I was the dude that had like... Every, like I had like a little container of just chicken and rice and I would just like pull it out and just start eating it. Everybody would be like, like you're eating that, bro, that is nasty. What are you doing? And I'm like, dude, like that's just my meal. And it was, that's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would get like, yeah. not, not like, I get like taunted by that, but it, it would be like funny. Like, ew, bro, that's nasty. You're eating that for like the 50th time in a row. I'm like, yep. Yep, that's it. Because yeah. it was not. I mean, it wasn't good. It was literally like bland chicken and bland rice, no seasoning, no nothing. I think it was like frozen chicken at the time, at just yeah. in a box, and I'd just eat it. It was just yeah, or in class. Yeah, no. it was just yeah. No, I used to get in trouble all the time really? for eating in class. I would get kicked out. Of, I would get kicked out of class. I got I racked up over forty hours of detention primarily from eating in class because they would they would try to kick me out of class, and I would just Dang. I like. 
I cared about bodybuilding more than anything. I would walk around with a duffel bag with all my supplements, cold oh, chicken God. and rice. I'd have a, a loaf of bread and peanut butter in there. I would have this big ass duffel bag with me every day. And, uh, you know, they kicked me out of class. They say, you can't eat in here. Or you got to leave. So I would literally just walk out of the school. I'd walk right to the school and go to the YMCA and go train. And this just happened all the time. And, uh, yeah, eventually, eventually that led to me <laughs> literally getting into like a physical altercation with my principal, oh, yeah, <laughs> which is fucking yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was That's that crazy. was a while yeah, ago. We that was way different, like high school experience with that. <laughs> yeah, we weren't even allowed to drink water. We couldn't even what? have water. You had to go to the water fountain because you couldn't have any water bottles with you because kids would bring in vodka and just get fucked up during class. Okay, so yeah. there were Some a lot of restrictions. Like, not that much, though. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, no. So you were you were getting by without any no, issue. I was I'm jealous. Very <laughs> fortunate. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, can I eat my chicken right here? I don't care. Just don't spill it everywhere. Fair enough. It has happened, but yeah, yeah. And sometimes yeah, I would, so. they would even let me microwave it. They had like microwaves, and I'd be like, "Can I eat it up?" Yeah. Beep. Wow, that's fucking yeah, that's even more. They're making it all convenient know, for right? you. Yeah, they got a blender in there. You're blend. You're making shakes in the back. Yes, yes, <laughs> literally, yes. I go with making protein shakes in class, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Now, have you? You haven't gotten labs done since we've been working together, right? Or am I no, no, forgetting? No, no, no. no, you haven't. Have you ever gotten labs done? Yeah, yeah, I have got my lab done. I got my when I was, I was, peak cut. I got like my like it was just like, I think it was actually a pretty big panel. I got my tests, my free tests, and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. Do you remember what your test was at? Yeah, it was at like this was when I was like the leanest I've ever been, and it was at like. I want to say 180, 190. Yeah. yeah. But this was when, like, I was lean. Now it's yeah. definitely, like, a lot higher. Yeah. 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 And did you ever, was this after you started? Well, obviously not after you started blowing up, but this was, you know, did you ever talk about that on social media? No. No, no, no. I never. Because I'm, I'm sure people always try to ask you to, to show bloods. I'm sure people always want yeah, to yeah, yeah, see yeah, the lab yeah. work. No, it's, um, that's, like, one of the biggest things people are like, do you show your blood work? Bro, even if I showed you my blow work and everything was fine, you still call me a fake daddy. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter. People are, are so stupid. Like, there's obviously anybody can, you know, do a protocol, change things to make it seem like they look natural on blood work either way. Mm -hmm. um, and even you do your blood work, you show people are going to say that you did that either way. They're going to say you did something. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it there's no way to win. It doesn't matter. Like, it, there's no way to win in these situations. Yeah, that's why, that's why I never, like, I got my blood work. And I was going to make a video about it. I was going to be like, hey, here's my blood work. But then I was like, why even bother actually now that I think about it? If somebody doesn't think I'm natty, nobody is going to, that thinks I'm a fake natty is going to look at my blood work and be like, wow, this guy actually is natural. They're going to look at it and be like, okay, he did a protocol and he got it all like checked up. He's still fake natty. Like, so there's literally zero point in showing my blood work. Like zero. It was just yeah, me. It's not going to make sure I'm not dying or something. Hmm. Yeah, we should we should get labs done again at some point here though. So I'm curious to see what you're at, especially now that you're you know at a fucking at the biggest you've been, biggest point you've been now, yeah. and yeah. everything's just been running, running perfectly smooth. Yeah, the big I can tell it's high because the biggest like factor for me where I can tell like how my like like test is is my libido is like changes a lot as I bulk. Like when I'm super lean, it's like zero. And then it's just, as I bulk, it gets progressively more. It just goes like, as I get like heavier in body fat, it just grows. Yeah. Yeah. So basically you're saying your libido is sky high right now. <laughs> I've never said that. It's not as high, dude. It's not as high as it was my, um, like when I was 20% body fat or like when I was like last bulk. Well, that make that would make a bit more sense though. Now you, um, we're gonna be keep pushing for the next year. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna get you. You're probably gonna have to pull back down, get you down to a better. I mean, honestly, we don't even have to do that right now because you've literally you're you've gotten leaner. You you've stayed at a good composition as you've gotten bigger. Yeah. Uh, you just fucking crazy. Tells us that you're sensitive. You know, everything is being used, uh, utilized as very effectively. Uh, so I'm very I'm very happy with that. As far as you know, having to potentially pull you down in the future, that's obviously gonna have to occur at some point. So maybe we pull labs at some point then. 
uh, and then you know sooner so we can compare and contrast how that's actually uh, changing mm-hmm. throughout you know your your peak and your your lowest uh, composition. But um, yeah, man, what do you uh, what are your plans? <laughs> you don't even know. You can't even tell me your plans. Yeah, I don't know. It's my plans like for like just my bulk. Like, what do you, what do you mean? Just I mean, I, I'm in. I'm in charge of the bulk, oh, yeah. but right, fucking yeah, right, 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 right. I mean, hey, dude. Like, you don't want to post on social media. I mean, you're obviously continuing to. Yeah. You know, are you? You're not on YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. No, no. I'm literally just on Instagram. You don't want to be on YouTube. And I just like. You're just riding this out, I'm just man. You're just pictures of myself on social media, and people like it. I guess. You got any advice? Any advice for kids? Any, I get that DM like six times a day, dude. Any tips? Yeah, what's your what is your answer? Mm, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't. I mean, actually, the best piece of advice that I can actually give is one that I don't even respect myself, and it's be consistent. <laughs> Why don't you respect that yourself? Because I'm not consistent with my uploads at all like you're talking about if you're talking about like on social media like to like like people ask like how do you blow up on social media well my main answer is oh no fucking no no i'm talking about for people who want to you know look like oh, you oh look dude i thought you were talking about social media social media bro like i don't even think you know what's going on dude, i think I you just kind of fucking you just you just popped off and you're like all right i guess i'll just fucking ride this out no yeah uh for to look like me no then yeah be consistent actually is a great one too but i follow that one except <laughs> i promise <laughs> Yeah, no, dude, be consistent. Yeah. Um, honestly, like, if you're just starting, like, there's, you really don't need to know, like, there's depth to, like, bodybuilding, obviously. There's lots of depth, but, like, to get bigger, like, when you're just starting, there's not that much you need to know. Like, if you... Yeah, you're going to spawn. You're going to spawn to anything. Right. If you eat a lot of food and there's protein in there and you train hard and you just don't over complicate things and you rest you're going to make progress, right? People always like beginners. I'll see literally dudes that are like complete beginners asking me like, what's the best split? Should I do keto? I'm like, what? Don't worry about this split, dude. Like just go to the gym, train hard, eat protein and you'll be fine. Obviously as you get more into it, you can, (laughs) you know, advance, but yeah. You said, uh, you know, rest, right? I'm curious. How do you, Go about prioritizing rest with your with your schedule. I I'm assuming you have a lot of l- nights where you have to stay up late getting work done. No, <laughs> no actually, no, not. Re- I like to do my work. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> this fucking guy. I haven't this had one. that yet happened to me where I have to. Oh, actually, that's a lie. One time it was like I was. It was like the night before a final, and I needed to get a good grade in the final or something like that, and I just like I stayed up. Ah. Uh, decently late later than i would enjoy because the final was at 8 a.m and i usually never take 8 a.m so i'd like to go from like 10 to 1 for my classes and it just you know i studied a little late so i didn't get that much rest but i always try to get make sure i get eight hours of sleep at least or like as much as i need i like to wake up naturally as much as possible we'll say so i just go mm. to bed. do you have any troubles feeling tired throughout the day falling asleep um, sometimes I'll like, cause we, I think we talked about this. Sometimes I'd like actually struggle to like fall asleep. So I like to mm-hmm. give myself a lot. If I want to get eight hours of sleep, I'll probably go to bed like nine hours, nine and a half hours before the time I have to wake up just cause I know sometimes it takes me a while to fall asleep and I like to give myself time just in case so I can get my eight hours. But that's when I'll take like sometimes if I have to. I fall asleep quick. I'll take like, you know, melatonin or something like that. That will help me rest. But yeah, I, I prioritize mm-hmm. sleep a lot. Like sleep is part of the stuff that I prioritize over school because it's part of bodybuilding, right? Like resting is super important. So I'm going to put that over school back. It goes back to like, what do I put over school? Bodybuilding. So gym, um, rest, eating, I'm going to put that over school. So resting, if I have to like pick between like studying, resting, I'm probably going to pick resting. I'm going to wing yeah. the exam. Yeah. Well, not even just for bodybuilding, just for mental clarity. I think a lot of people overlook that too. And they, you know, a lot of stuff that gets regurgitated is like the motivational, you know, hype quotes, which, you know, there is like some truth to where it's like, oh, you like, 
they're gonna have to stay up late sacrifice sleep like it's not about being comfortable like there's times where that might have to happen but at the end of the day like you cannot function at 100 percent if you're running on low energy like if you're if you want to work and be as efficient as possible you need to rest and reset that needs to be a priority like why would i stay up 24 hours in a row to work end up working at 50 percent efficiency when i could rest and then come back and work at 100 percent and be much more productive mm-hmm. and you know obviously the whole aspect of being able to recover and grow in bodybuilding terms too and i think that just goes heavily overlooked because i think people get this sense of you know i'm hard yeah. i'm you know, yeah. fucking motivated. Like, I don't need to sleep. Yeah. I don't need to rest. And again, sometimes that might need to happen. But at the end of the day, like, that shouldn't be your life. Like, sometimes here and there, fine. But you need to be prioritizing rest if you want to actually make significant progress in in anything. You know, mm-hmm. you know, trying to grow business, getting work done efficiently, studying, fucking, you know, building muscle. You know, I'm not. I'm. You know, I remember studying when I was again. I was only in high school, so college is probably a lot harder. But like, you're tired as fuck. Like, you can't focus. You can, it's, it's so hard to absorb that information. You need to have energy. Yeah, dude, no. You know, your brain. Yeah. yeah. That goes along to the point. Like, I can't like I can't study all night because like if I study like late, I'm not gonna study. Like I'm gonna open my phone up and pull out my like Google slides with the notes, and then I'm be like, oh, I'm tired. Go to bed. Like I just keep like. Yeah. I need the rest. Like it's very important. I'd rather. Yeah. Go to the exam, like, hundred percent, studying less than going to the exam like fifty percent, having more study. You know what you know what I mean? Or along anything. Yeah, because your you know. your mind's gonna be cluttered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You retain information better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're not using Adderall or anything like that either. <laughs> no man. No. Now. When you approach training, are there any specific things, like any tips you have, like going into training that you try to specifically focus on when it comes to, you know, are you trying to constantly progressively overload, connecting with the tissue, approaching warming up, or things of that nature? So I try to like, I see training, like just pure training as like a skill, right? So mm-hmm. as you progress in your training, you're going to like get better at it. So I try to look at every session as a way to get better at training and just like, you know, focus on how can I make this movement better? How can I connect with my muscles better? How can I get them to grow more from this movement? So I try to like, maybe like learn, like maybe learn something from every session that I can do better or improve and just get better at, because that's going to help me on the long term, like way more if I just try and like just get better at it right i mean obviously with experience you're gonna get better right but if you just like try Mm -hmm. to do that even more it just helps you right so that's just what i try to do yeah i mean with experience you will get better to a certain extent but again like you said like you need to make the conscious effort too so do you have can you give me like an example of that like how are you going about evaluating something that you can improve upon and then what would that be that you did to improve on that if you have like a a specific movement or something in mind okay Uh, this is with just a specific movement for example on my um, my first bulk, I would uh, my my chest day my I would have like a push day or whatever. And the first movement I would always do is my favorite movement um, in working out ever is incline dumbbell bench, right? And when I was on my first bulk, so this was like a year and a half ago, I would just the only thing that I would always have good form and depth, but the only thing that would matter to me is just like weight. So like I would be like today I'm getting the one tens for six like and then the next push day i'm gonna get them for seven and then always trying to push more weight more weight more weight more weight more weight and just trying to go up in weight as much as possible and getting to like a point where it's like too much weight not too much weight to where it's like i can't handle it but too much weight to where it's like there's no point in getting this heavy when you could use way lighter dumbbells and get more growth so, for example, this bulk now, I've tried to make more from less. So instead of grabbing like 130s and trying to get six reps of just pure pressing, I've been trying to use, you know, like the 80s and just getting as deep as possible, you know, learning to make the lighter weight feel heavier on the muscle that I actually want to target. So actually learn like trying to just use my chest as much as possible and actually filling it there and making the weight just feel super heavy and using it right in order to get more and it being safer, like safer on your joints, safer on your shoulder, safer on everything. You just get so many benefits from going lighter, but making it feel heavier than if you just try and press super heavy weight, like weight for just as many reps as possible. 
Absolutely, yeah, hundred percent. I think all bodybuilders experience this, and will tell you the same thing, right? It's about making the movement as hard as possible for the target muscle. It's not just about moving weight. And there's going to be points and times where you're going to have to do that again and again. Like there's points and times where you're going to be focusing more, more so on progressive overload and getting stronger and stronger. But then you're going to get to a point where it might get to okay now. For the next few months, we're going to focus on refining form and technique and execution, and maybe dropping back that weight to, to uh, you know better better execute for the intended purpose. And it, it takes you have to be able to set your ego aside to do that. You know, when you go from pressing one fifties and now we're dropping down to the hundreds or one tens, you're like, oh, I feel weak as fuck. And it's actually you're actually making it challenging for the same amount of reps. You feel so much weaker, but you know that that is it's also you know necessary for injury prevention because there does come point in time, especially you know you'll learn this eventually if you if you take gear and you get to a certain point of strength there's just inherently more risk with heavier loads your tendons are not going to be as strong and you know there's gonna be times where i might feel like i could press the 160s one day but i'm usually using the 130s so should i really listen to my body that time and go to 160s and, and put myself in that risky position yeah probably probably not probably not a smart idea so uh, you need to be very very self-aware and conscious of that but yeah i mean i think that's uh, important uh, there should always be phases where you focus on getting stronger with while maintaining execution but as you get stronger and stronger it will be hard to maintain the execution so then you go back you refine repeat the process but ultimately you know execution should always be a priority and i think a lot of people also get stuck on like the whole concept of my muscle connection and whatnot which you know is important i've talked about this many times i'm sure you've seen me talk about it but you know people say they over obviously they either over emphasize the importance of it or they completely disregard it and it's, it's not one or the other. It's just the fact of it's, you know, neural efficiency as you get bigger and you make the effort to execute with intent, you're going to develop a better connection. And if you're becoming more experienced, like if you were at the point now and you were doing an incline press and you only felt your shoulders, I'd be like, this is an issue. You know, there's something that's changed here. We need to refine this. Like you should be able to have a good connection with your chest. But when you were first starting out, like your first year in the gym, if you were like, I can't really feel my chest on press, I'd be like, don't even worry about that right now. Like it's not, not a priority. You don't have that, that. Uh, neurological connection even established yet alone like any real tissue so uh, there is a middle ground there i think a lot of people get diffused but when you approach your uh your training are you 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 have a good understanding that i'm assuming are you focusing on connecting with the target tissue do you do anything to warm up and like get blood flow and things of that nature yeah. i mean obviously i know this stuff because i have your programming yeah, but just for people say, watching like, i mean you know what i do to warm up yeah but i always um i always try to focus on the, like the intended muscle right because I mean, obviously, like, if I'm doing, like, um, like let's say, like, a lap pull-down or something like that, or, like, assisted pull-up, I'm not, like, oh, I really want to hit the, and then just name some sort of weird muscle that I don't know about. I'm just focusing on, like, do I feel this in my back? Like, just make this as back as possible, right? I'm not super, like, if I don't feel it exactly in my back, I'm going to, like, go nuts and just not, like, not be satisfied. But I'm just going to try as much as possible to get, like, the connection with my back as much as possible. It's just, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's just it. And as you do those heavier loads, that connection is going to be the same, absolutely, right? Yeah, so absolutely. if I, yeah, if I grab like the heavy dumbbells, I can find and just try and press them as much as possible. Like, I don't even think I'm going to fill in my chest. I'm just going to just, you know, rep them out. But then if I grab like lighter dumbbells that I can, that I actually like, I can really just create as much tension on my chest as possible while still, you know, getting like hypertrophy because there's still weight on there. It's, that's my goal, you know? It's just, I don't, it doesn't like, obviously sometimes like I'll push myself, right? I'll go, I'm not gonna grab like the 35 and go like five miles per hour, right? I'm still gonna pick a heavy weight, but I just try and pick a balance between the two where it's like, yeah, I feel it. Like I feel it in my chest a hundred percent, but also, yeah, I'm challenging myself and I'm going heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to, uh, I, I, I am a big advocate for like warming up going into every movement. And I think a lot of people like say, once you warm up for the, for that, the whole workout, like you could just jump straight into mm -hmm. working sets for every exercise. And I don't, I don't think that's intelligent to do whatsoever. You know, you should always be do like one or two warm up sets at least before every, every exercise that you do. So on those, like I said, those first initial warm up sets, those feeder sets, you're going lighter. You're going to have a much better, uh, connection, better sensation, contraction, my muscle connection. So it's establishing that, right? You know, you're doing a row, establish that full protraction and retraction, feel the squeeze, establish how it should feel. Then as you get heavier, go into those working sets, it's not going to feel the same, but you establish the movement pattern, how it should be executed, and then try to maintain that to the best of your ability while you're actually doing sufficient loads to fail for the target rep range. But 
it's not you don't expect to get that same crazy contraction at the peak as you did with that warm up set for ten reps that was you know a hundred pounds. But I think a lot of people like can't co- comprehend that. Why don't I feel the squeeze? You know, it doesn't feel the same. It's like it's it's not supposed to feel the same. But you establish that beforehand, so the execution remains the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then as far as uh, diet goes, have you found anything to help? with i know you say you don't fucking struggle with any of this stuff but you know Sounds like so ways bad. to make your food like, that yeah, I'm just, you know, don't struggle. <laughs> like i don't know it's just a blessing i don't know what it is. Just... i just don't really crave foods at all i don't know yeah what have you found like ways to make them taste better like no, are there like no, any you no, know you just eat that shit i eat bland chicken and wow. i don't even put seasoning except salt because it's in my program that's it oh. yeah you don't give a I fuck all right like, there we go care. like i don't know i eat I don't like know a dog is. I just people like will like be like, what is wrong with you? Because like like my roommate, for example, he also does like he does bodybuilding. Like he he's he's into it as much as me, and he like he cooks too, right? And then he'll put like five grams of seasoning on his chicken and well like zero calorie seasoning. Obviously, he's not like doing it wrong. And he's and I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. I don't know why. I'm just gonna eat the bland chicken. I don't know what it is. I just don't have this drive for taste. I don't. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I, I mean, that's great. That's like a problem off of your list. You know, I'm sure. Does it have to do with, you know, how were you raised when you were at home? Like, is there a lot of junk food around you? Were your parents no, giving you a lot of healthy food? Night. Yeah, she cooked. So you didn't have like a lot of candy and shit in your house or things of that nature? No. Yeah, I think that plays a huge factor into yeah, it. I think that plays like, a huge, yeah, like the cravings so that people get. We we went out to eat like once, like sometimes, we you know, we got fast food before. I like I couldn't eat McDonald's or something. If I wanted McDonald's, I could eat McDonald's, right? It's just like, you know, every night... Cause I'm European. Every I don't know if Americans do that as much, but it would be like, mom cooks for dinner and we eat whatever mom cooks. You know what I mean? It's just not like going mm-hmm. out. To Were you born here? No. Oh, you're born in what? France, Germany. France. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What did you come over? Sixth grade. So eleven years old. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys go back? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We try to go back like. Well, we used to do like once a year, go back to France for like a month or something. Yeah. 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 That's a, uh, that, that is a good point. It, I've noticed this in a lot of people. It's all due to their upbringing and how they were, you know, fed as a child. If they had a lot of junk food in the house, if they went out to eat a lot, uh, you know, the quality of food that their parents fed them. Because uh, people like sugars, I don't want to say like sugars a drug. I don't know if sugars classified as drug, but people are addicted to fucking sugar, right? And they establish that when they're younger. They're always eating candy and it creates this this mindset of, oh my God, like I have to follow a diet. I can't have candy. I can't have this. I can't have that. It, it's so mentally taxing on them because they literally have this addiction and it's, they're not able to conceive that. And then they talk about, oh, well, you need balance. Like it's okay to have the cheat meal here and there. I'm not saying that it's necessarily not, but it, they try to, it's such a cope just because they literally are addicted to food outside of, you know, healthy normal food and then you have people like you and other guys that i've met where they're like yeah we only ate home cooked food my mom never gave me any of that shit i have literally no cravings for junk food could not care less about it and then the other end of the spectrum are like oh my god like i just wish i could have a brownie and you just, you just don't give a fuck yeah no yeah i just yeah i mean like don't get me wrong like brownie I, I wouldn't mind having a brownie right now right but it's just i don't have that craving ever like when mm-hmm. i get like when i was eating like you know because for some time i was eating like 1500 calories a day I would get, like, obviously I get hungry, right? I'm still human, but I wouldn't be, like, I want, like, double frosty from Wendy's or something. It would just be, like, you know, I wouldn't mind eating a steak right now or something like that. Like, it, it, I just don't really strive for sugar or anything like that. I don't know. And that doesn't it makes it a lot easier for you to... Yeah, yeah. It just has to do with, I think, what I was fed to, obviously, growing up. Mm-hmm. Are your parents into fitness at all? Uh, more or less, uh, yeah, my, oh, my, my, table shaking. my, um, my mom goes to, like, like the gym, I think, but it's just like for, you know, like Pilates or yoga or stuff like that. And we eat healthy, right? We try, everybody's in decent shape. So, but that doesn't have, I don't think that necessarily, I don't want to say influence me because none of them are like, like super like into sports. None of my families were like really like runners or play sport in high school or anything like that. It's just. Mm-hmm. Say in sh- in, the, in good shape is a good way to put it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was just curious to see where your genetics came from. 
if you yeah, like yeah, yeah. if you could even see that i know my vascularity genetics came from my dad because my dad's very vascular even without working out is so like yeah. without lifting weights yeah does he have huge calves yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, well, those are nice for me, dude. <laughs> those are huge gaps. Yeah, but they say they, they skipped out on you. You got it all went to your everything else. Actually, I know, but I wish like I wish they went to the calves, man. They didn't. Yeah. Oh well. Well, all right, man. I think we we covered a, a good amount here. Is there anything that you wanna go over? Anything you wanna plug? Any any tips? Uh, any tricks you got for the followers out there? Since they never get to hear you talk. Dude, honestly, like my the main thing I wanna say is stop overcomplicating it because I get so many DMs from people asking me about specific diets or specific splits, specific workouts. And every time I like want to respond to them and give them a pretty big explanation on like, you know, you don't need to worry about that dude. You're five months into the gym. You shouldn't worry about if you should train your lateralis major when doing a single arm row lat pull down, right? Or whatever. I said some bunch of crap right there. I don't know what I said, but just don't overcomplicate it. Be consistent. <laughs> enjoy the gym. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, enjoy enjoy the gym first. It's a, it's a very good yeah. point. Enjoy a lot of people, a lot of guys get into this. I think a lot of guys see people like you and they get into this. They get into the bodybuilding and the gym because they think that they're going to be in the position as you and see. I want to have five hundred thousand followers and you know aspire to try to make a career out of this. It's fine to have aspirations, but the thing that needs to come first is you should fall in love with training more than before anything else. Like you want to bodybuild, like this is what you love, not because you expect some type of return from it. If the return comes along the way, great. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But training, it needs to be the first passion. And you, you said a lot of people, they try to overcomplicate everything, especially the beginners, man. Like worried about fatigue, stimulus to fatigue ratio. Like that's not even gonna apply to you, man. Like you're gonna be fine. You're gonna recover. Stop worrying about how much volume you're doing. You've been training for a year. Like you're gonna be fine. You're gonna grow. Like stop. It's it, it's it's become ridiculous. And obviously, like you said, you know, just train, train fucking hard. Train hard and try to learn along the way. Just don't overthink and uh, maybe get a coach at some point. Yeah, yes, that, that right there. No. But the thing that actually you did mention that I did want to point out is um you did say so this is something I see a lot or I used to actually but some people would actually literally only go to the gym because of social media or like because that's they wanted to like make gym videos or stuff like that. Like if you are only going to the gym because like social media and you wanna do that, like record yourself in the gym and that's just like that's crazy. Like I don't know like I don't see how you would do that. Just going to the gym only for social media. Like, cause I've heard of people that actually mm -hmm. do that. I know people that actually do that. And it's just like, you're not gonna, you're not, first of all, you're probably not gonna do well on social media if you're only at the gym because of social media. Like that's just a terrible way to look at it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think a lot of people do it and they don't, it's like a subconscious thing. A lot of people don't realize that they're even doing it either. We see it. You know, you walk into a lot of gyms. I mean, I don't know what it's like in Alabama when you're in the middle of the boonies where the hills have eyes. But, uh, <laughs> fuck, fuck it. But, you know, you walk into a lot of these big gyms. Every kid in there has a tripod. Yeah. Everybody's recording themselves. It's all about content, content, content. It's it's fucking yeah. cancer environment, bro. Because it's kids that literally, like, you know, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but it's kids that really shouldn't, like, there's no point in recording yourself unless, like, you're trying to send it to your coach or something, which is obviously, like, none of them are doing. They're all trying to get it on TikTok. You know, they've been training for a year just to, like, try to put content out. So they see content, and it gives them an introduction to fitness, which is great. You know, it's awesome. You get into fitness, but they do it now with the subconscious thought of trying to make some type of, uh, you know, career out of it and try to get some reward rather than just, ex you know, rather than just, like, trying the gym and, getting into the tr training and falling in love with the process of training and just training fucking hard and balls to the wall because everything they do they ask all these questions because it's like you know i want to be the science space this because i want to seem like i know something that you don't so people listen to me and i can amass a following or that i can you know now try to optimize my progress in the shortest time period possible not because i actually just want to optimize progress but because it's going to reflect how I look on social media and what I'm able to get out of it. And there's a lot of subconscious thought that just goes into it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of people just have to sit down and ask themselves, why are they really doing this? What are they expecting out of it? Cause I've had so many kids come up to me and they're like, yeah, my dream is to be a young LA athlete. I'm like, that's Holy fucking crap. terrible. That's your dream. That's fucking <laughs> what? Crap. That's your dream. What do you think is going to happen when you become a young LA athlete? You're going to be a millionaire, dude, bro. Like no, nothing's going to change for you. Day, dude. <laughs> 
Yeah, like no, it's dude. insane. It's cool. But, don't get me wrong, but dude, yeah, it's, that's your dream. Yeah, it's like that's their aspiration. That's their reason for training. It's like, come on, like. Yeah, I get people like in real life, like people that I know that have like this is I don't know if this is mean or not. If it is, I'm sorry. But they have like like they have like a thousand followers, or like they post like I mean they post every day. They have like a thousand followers, and they're like, so like, could you get me in touch with Young LA? Or they're like, how did you like get in touch with Young LA? And I'm like, dude. Don't you want me to go call Young LA? Be like, yo, I got my boy over here. He wants a sponsorship. He got a thousand followers. He's like, he's been in the gym for six months. Y'all yeah. want a sponsor? I'm like, no, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't just like do that. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. Yeah. It's, like, it's so weird. Or like, same with like, I don't know. It's just yeah. It's very weird. There's a lot of a lot of unrealistic expectations yeah. in this industry. A lot. Yeah. A lot of people think like once you get a sponsorship, your life's gonna change. Nothing really fucking changes, man. Like you get free get products, free you products, make some money, but cool, unless bro. you That's it, bro. Like Yeah, but unless like even you know you, you have fucking four hundred thousand followers. I don't know how much you're making, but I'm gonna assume you're not making over six figures in commission yet. Uh, absolutely not, bro. What? Yeah, see, there's a lot of, there's, I don't want to say there's a lot of guys that are, there isn't a lot of guys that are, that's what people think though. Dude. There's very few guys in this industry that are fucking making insane amounts of money from commission. It's yeah. not as many, and everything's going to happen to them. Like, yes, there's some guys out there, but that just comes down to like amassing a cult following. And I don't want to say it comes down to luck, but a lot of it does come down to luck. Dude, like, yeah, like you can put in the effort, you can put out content, you get a, you can get a commission, you'll get free products, you'll make some money, but the expectations are so unrealistic as to what's actually going to happen. And then people also want to, you know, train for a little bit, train for two years, maybe do a show. And now they're a coach. Now they want to start coaching. Mm, yeah. Now I got to start making money. And that's just, it's terrible there too. Now that it's all about monetizing and like, you have no business doing this. Yeah. And this is the, the Dunning-Kruger effect, which we've seen all over TikTok. Everybody thinks they're smarter than they are. They know everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's science-based. I can teach you how to do this. And they don't know how to program or do anything, but they think they do. It's just, yeah, People you ask know, me if I coach it, every day, bro. I'm like, dude. I'm a 19 year old engineering student. I do not know how to code, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. No. Yeah, no. It's uh, yeah. I don't realize how much experience plays a factor. It it just comes back to the fact that a lot of people are doing this with the sole intent of trying to monetize it from the yeah. get go and not actually trying to learn and you know enjoy the process, enjoy training, you know, mm -hmm. fucking gain the knowledge that you can be a sponge and really just be a student of bodybuilding because you love it. Not because you're just trying to figure out a way to make some income because you'd rather do that than work a nine to five. And I don't blame you for wanting to do that, but it, it's not just like everybody feels entitled to be able to do that. Like you have to earn your right in some respect. You have to do the work. You have to have the experience. Yeah. You have to be in the trenches as corny as that no, sounds yeah, before I'm you're not. able to <laughs> start a business like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't even like. Yeah, I dude. I was thinking about doing like just like selling like a program, like just like a program, like like I don't know, just like you do with the bro split or something like that. But I didn't even like. I feel like I'd be scamming people. Like I just feel like I would mm -hmm. literally be scamming people if I charged them twenty bucks for a program. I don't know. I just, I just would yeah. feel so bad if somebody or like coaching. Like, yeah. hey, someone, do you coach, bro? I'll pay you five hundred a month. Five hundred a month, dude. Like, <laughs> like. I don't know. It's just it, I would feel so wrong. People will take. People will take the offer. Yeah, people, dude, you know, they'll I eat it right up. You, I could make so much money right now if I would just be like, "Hey guys, I'm opening up ten coaching spots, and I'm if you want to get in shape, pay me five hundred bucks a month, and I got you, bro." And I could definitely make money yeah. like that. But I just my mind, I would just feel so bad. Like, how do I deal with somebody who's diabetic? How do I deal with somebody who's sick, who has something, who can't eat with this allergy? I don't know what I'm doing. I know how to get my body in shape. Let me ask. You know, I. I know what I'm doing for me. I don't know how to get other people in shape. Like, what? Maybe if I got a lot it's of experience, not, maybe, but I don't. Yeah. It's just about having integrity. A lot of people don't have integrity. You understand where you're at and you understand, you know, that, you know, you really wouldn't feel good about doing that because you don't feel like you have enough enough knowledge, which is fine. You know, I'm sure at some point you will and, you know, you'll still have the following and then you can put some stuff out there and make a little bit of extra money, mm -hmm. but you don't feel comfortable doing it now and that's completely fine. But other people would hear that and try to give you the advice like, oh, you're stupid. You have an opportunity to make so much money. Do this now. You're fumbling the bag. It's mm -hmm. just they don't have the same level of integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why you see everybody trying to become a coach. But a lot of people also don't even recognize that within themselves. Again, we come back to the Dunning-Kruger thing. Mm -hmm. Kids watch too much TikTok. And think they're now qualified to start training people because they've watched 30 second clips and have trained for two years. <laughs> watched the 30 it's, second uh, video. And now, now yeah, it's uh, 
<laughs> it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. And, you know, there are also a lot of them are even charging, you know, upwards $600, $700 a month, which is insane. Really? It's insane. It's crazy. Yeah, it's Jeez. nuts. It's, it's out of control. And the problem with that is the average person will see that who's getting into training and see the guy who's been training for two or three years and looks like this guy knows more than them. So they'll still invest into it. They'll genetics. still invest into it as long as... Yeah, yeah. Even if they don't have good genetics, bro, like it's actually crazy. Some of the shit that's going on in this industry, it's it's a uh, not regulated whatsoever, and somehow it should be. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, man. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. That, in there that's and, and like the, there's a lot of stuff in this industry that I don't like. I'm not gonna lie, or that I just like did. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. I was on a. This was a, happened a while back. I was scrolling on my feed and I saw TikTok live, mm -hmm. and it was just you know how people do those fucking lives and they'll just show products to try to sell products. Yeah. Just to, to use their code through the, through the TikTok oh, shop. Yeah. And the guy had a, he was selling creatine. I think it was like Echo's creatine or some shit. Ooh. And he was just talking about creatine. And I, I just came across it. And he's like, oh, it's your creatine. It's going to make you bigger. You know, it's going to fill you up with water. So I just asked him, I was like, can you explain to me what creatine Fills does? Water, and he couldn't explain it to it. <laughs> couldn't explain to me what, how creatine works at all. Didn't know what ATP was. Didn't know how, what creatine phosphate was. Could not explain it. And so, I just start fucking with this guy. I'm just bored. I'm, I'm literally just bored. I'm like, can you explain to me how creatine works? And he's explaining. I'm like, that's not, that's wrong. That's not how creatine works. So then it came back to the fact, well, there's not anything wrong with selling creatine, but you have no fucking integrity because you're selling something and you don't even know how it works. Like this could be something that's harmful. We don't even know. You're just trusting other people by their word of mouth and you've done no due diligence. They teach you how, to, how creatine works in like eighth grade, bro. Like it's literally like basic, it's like a basic biology class. I'm pretty sure. At least I learned it. I don't know if you did, but they, they taught us. I learned it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember learning it in eighth grade and I was like, yeah, I know this. I have the answer, but, that's funny. but, um, it's just crazy because these kids will sell anything. TikTok shop now being present, especially, mm -hmm. and they don't understand how these products work. And, you know, again, not that there's anything wrong with selling creatine or amino acids and stuff, but like you shouldn't be selling shit and mm -hmm. trying to make money when you don't even understand what you're pushing. That's a lack of integrity. Have you seen the, I've seen this a couple times on my free page on TikTok and it's this dude, or I don't know if there's multiple, but he has, a, um, he has an ab roller and he just... <laughs> He tries to sell this like fifty dollar ab roller, and he just does a bunch of crunches on it, and then he goes in the mirror, flexes his six pack. This is what you're gonna look like, and then he goes back and does it for five minutes, and then he goes back in the mirror, flexes his six pack, and he just does that over and over and over again to sell his ab roller on the on like TikTok Live. That's all he does. Wow. It's, yeah, I mean these dudes are running up. They're insane. running it up. They're making dude, a lot of these guys are making crazy yes. money on there. It's fucking ridiculous. It's crazy, dude. That's all he does. It's <laughs> it's so funny. He's like you you don't care. You should mm -hmm. do this ab roller thing, and you will get a six pack in six minutes. I'm like, <sighs> and people buy it. Yeah, that's the what five, part, like six, pisses me off. It's like I, people actually believe that. A six pack in six minutes. That's insane. That's like uh, this is before your time. There was a guy called Mike Chang. Mm -hmm. He used to do six pack shortcuts on YouTube. It was like videos, you know all that. Not gonna lie. You seen that? Yeah. yeah, it was. He was like one of the first YouTubers in fitness industry back in like 2011, 2010. Mm -hmm. Like back in those days, I remember. Um, eventually, that guy fell off because everybody realized that he was selling a bunch of bullshit scams. Like you're not going to get a six pack in five minutes. But it's amazing that guys are still doing that and getting away with it. It shows that there's we've had involvement, but there really hasn't been for the average population. Like people still don't understand a lot of this shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, but the I, I uh before this was like before body line, this was like when I was like twelve or something. I would watch those like um like six pack six pack in six minute ab workout, and I actually used to do them. Like you know what I'm talking about. This is way uh -huh. like, before body line again, but it's just like this. Like, it's just some buff dude like geared up that does like six ab crunches or something, and he tells you you do this for six minutes a day, and in a month you'll have abs. And I was like, oh bet. Yeah, and I just did it, dude. I mean, I didn't know what that was going on. I was like, all right, I'm going to do some crunches. I'm going to get it out. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, it's, just a, it's a fine line to walk. It's hard to balance because you know the opportunity is there to clickbait the fuck out of mm -hmm. people and take advantage of people who don't know any better because that's going to do well, right? I could post a video, how to make how to get abs in six minutes. Probably going to do better than most of my videos. People are going to eat it up. People are naive. They don't know any better. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know it's bullshit, yeah. so it's a lack of integrity, and you know I'm sacrificing morality for it just for the sake of making money. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know they say you could be a shark in business, fuck it, make your money. But that's like I don't know. I feel like that shit always comes back to bite you, and it's just yeah. you know I, I doesn't agree with it doesn't sit well with me doing stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it it's also hard to do that too because when you try to have integrity and be transparent, it 
doesn't do as well because now things seem more complicated. Now I just talk about, oh, you have to die. You have to be in a cooler deficit. So it doesn't give the person the straight, simple answer they want. So less people are invested into it. It's a lot harder to grow a business and monetize that rather than just giving people a simple black and white answer and saying, well, none of this shit matters. Nutrient timing doesn't matter. As long as you hit your macros, that's fine. Do your ab workout for six minutes a day. You'll be fine. Like the simple black and white answers is what the general population wants. And, you know, that's a, a great way to monetize if you just have no integrity and don't care about giving people the honest truth and helping them learn. Yeah. Or like do this bicep workout and your biceps will double in size or stuff like that. But I see like this bicep workout doubled my biceps instantly. But I see on TikTok all the time. And I mean, you know, I guess it's a it's the way you have views, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's just weird. I never get that. I could yeah. never, like, dude. I didn't even want to post my workout split. Like, when I used to do, like, I posted, like, I used to post, like, this was a long time ago. I posted, like, me working out, and it was what I did for, like, my back or my back and by day, my chest day. And I would be like, like, why am I posting this? Because people shouldn't do my split, or people shouldn't do what I do. Like, this was back then. This was, like, a year ago, maybe. But it was a split that I made that was for me, like, for what I needed to do, like, for what I need to work on. For, and then people would be like, what's your split? My split is not good for you. You should not do my split. Like, you need to find what you need to do for you. And even if you're, if you're a beginner, mm-hmm. then you definitely don't need to do my split because it's just not made for you. So it's just, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah it's, it, and you can't even win that either because then you do post your split. People always got, people have shit to say everywhere, especially on that app. You post your split. People want to ask for it. They Then you post your split and then people are going to be like, too much volume. Yeah, You're doing this. Yeah. Is all every, everybody? Everybody's an expert now. Everybody wants to do this, bro. I've had people make videos on me saying I don't know how to work out because I did a fucking rotator warm up before I did my my chest exercise. Fucking junk volume. What? My warm up is junk volume. It's fucking. What? It's crazy because it's not optimal. It's not science based. Oh. People are so stupid. Oh. It, it, it is. They, they just. I don't, bro, it's, it's insane. But there's just. Junk volume? Yeah. What? Yeah. I. I just remember being mind boggled at like that. Point, but it's just like you gotta let it it's, it's, Like, what are you gonna say? You can't. Like, <laughs> it's with. There's no winning on the internet. It's literally everybody's an expert, no matter what happens. You know, you try to educate people too. You can't educate people without everybody else trying to argue and debate and thinking they know better, right? Mm-hmm. It's just can't post what you do without people criticizing and trying to tell you that what you're doing is wrong, even if it, you are doing is right. There's always gonna be, you know, critics on the internet, uh, you know, trying to say some bullshit. So it just comes with, comes with it, and. Like you said, you don't let any of this stuff bother you, right? Dude, absolutely not. <laughs> and yeah. Not at all, bro. Like, I, I just don't. I don't see a point. Like, I mean, like, it, it just critique in general, or just like, I mean, like, yeah. I not only that, I not just let it get to me. I just don't care enough. Like, I just, hey, Storm, you're doing this wrong. Not worth your energy. Okay. Like, what you want me to say? I'm not even gonna bother explaining to him why I'm doing this. Like, I just don't care. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. It's not worth the energy. No. There's no winning. The people people who think they're right are literally going to think they're right. This is something I've learned no matter what. Like, you cannot you cannot tell people otherwise. And I think it's funny because there's so many people that I have blocked on TikTok just mm-hmm. for saying dumb shit because I'll block people all the time. Really? And I have hundreds of DMs on, I guess, because you can get DMs on TikTok now too, but in Instagram of people DMing me that I have blocked them and like apologizing because they realized that they were being stupid and begging me to unblock yeah. them, which I don't do. I, I but it's just, it, you know, people eventually realize and they learn the hard way one way or another. Everybody, you know, wants to think they're smarter than they are again. It's just, yeah. no, I mean, honestly, it is what it is. Can't argue with dumb people. Okay. You're right. You know, fine. You're right. Go figure it out on yourself. Yeah. That's different. That's like, if you do a dumb comment like that, I understand blocking. It's just like, yeah, people might be like, sometimes people I've seen it, like somebody like questions it. Like it, it's like, Cause I've seen an influencer do this and I'm not going to say a name, no point, but so, there was an influencer and he posted like something like a workout and then somebody questioned it. They were like, Hey, why are you doing this? Or like just wondering, they weren't being mean. Like, why would you do this workout? And it was just like, Hey, what's the point of adding this to this workout? And then the guy blocked him. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. I mean, why? Yeah. The guy just, you don't have to respond to him, but blocking him because he's like just questioning it. I think that's a little bit of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. but then black well, stupid yeah. I mean that's not... no I mean questioning something is fine if you want to learn the, the the problem that comes in is most of the time it's people just coming in and trying to criticize and acting like they're an expert yeah. and it's it's funny because in my experience I mean I can really like 
swear to this and test to this, every single time somebody has tried to argue with me or tell me I'm doing something wrong, every single time it has been somebody who looks like shit. <laughs> I, I don't like even want to say that like that necessarily means something, but it's never been something that's actually yeah. – that has shown displayed any level of intelligence but then on top of that they also look like they've been in the gym for one to two years and are like you know have a shit body high percentage and obviously what they're doing isn't working but you know then you go to their page and they're like optimal base workout it's like four sets and you know obviously the shit isn't working for you bro like and it's always those people i've never had anybody that is actually like credible or respectable in the injury or actually looks good try to debate with me and it's just it's just amazing. But yeah, I mean, asking questions is fine. I love asking. I love when people ask and, you know, it gives me an opportunity to further educate, but it's always just like, you're doing this wrong or trying to be like condescending, like, oh, this guy is retarded. He doesn't know what he's doing. It's always some, it's just people are on this high horse and, you know, don't understand what they're talking about. So at that point, it's, it just gets to the point where you can't entertain. It's just like, all right, you're blocked. Bye. Like, you're not going to learn for, you don't, there's no chance of you learning from me and you're just going to contribute to negativity and also confuse more people who come in here and watch this. So Let's just remove you from the equation. Get out of here. Uh, yeah, and I don't see how you can, like, see somebody, like, that's obviously knows what they're doing, right? Like, that just, like, you know, like a huge dude. Like, say, like, I've seen a clip of somebody, like, critiquing Jay Cutler's workout two weeks out from the Olympia. I'm watching this. I'm like, dude, what are you on about? Like, what is going on? Like, if you, like, yeah. how can you watch somebody do something or explain something that clearly knows what they're doing or whatever they're doing is working? And yet you still, like... Are like and you're like a because you were saying those guys are all like beginners that are like a year into lifting and that watch like five optimal videos on TikTok and thinks they're expert. How can you like actually with a straight face like comment on this guy's TikTok or like comment on this guy's Instagram and just be like, "Yo, bro, you don't know what you're doing. Get better, get more optimal." Period. Like, how can you do that? Like, I just don't get it. Like, it makes no sense. It's just like, it's it's just ignorance. People don't understand that there's like levels to this. And you know, uh, everybody thinks they, again, they just watch this stuff and it's done in Kruger. That's the only way to put it. Right. Like there was a kid, if you go to like one of my last videos, there's like, there's like 400 comments or something from one kid arguing with everybody on this video oh. regarding me talking about nutrient timing and protein synthesis, which is how the body works. Like it's not even debatable. Any person who's done research on this in the field will tell you the same thing. It's how the body works. Mm -hmm. But then like, I, I go over some of these comments and this kid, I don't know if the, this person like thinks they actually know what they're talking about or if they're just like so like ego driven at this point because everybody's telling them wrong. So at the point where everything just has to be a defense. But I see him comment like these guys like Ronnie Coleman, like the bodybuilders, they didn't get that big because they ate six to seven meals a day. As long as they ate their protein in two or three meals, they would have looked exactly the same. It's like, how do you with you training for two years, looking the way that you do and the, your experience at fucking what, 18, 19, 20 years old? How the fuck could you even possibly come to the conclusion that you know better than these bodybuilders who are the best in the world? Not only the bodybuilders that are the best in the world, but the guys who coach these bodybuilders as well. So you're disagreeing with Chris Aceto, Milos, you're disagreeing with Hani, all these people. You know better. That's what you're telling me. That, that's what you're saying because you just don't understand this concept. And I can't cite you a specific study to show you that there's a black and white answer because that's just not how body only works. You want to think you know more than everybody else here. And it's just, yeah. it's amazing. I think a lot of these people have been taught because of TikTok that you can get answers for everything through a study. And that's not how research works either. It, it, people seem to not understand that whatsoever. So it's, it's amazing. I don't know. I was never like that. Whenever I saw people when I was younger, it's still to this day. Yeah. I, even if I don't agree with what they're saying, I always listen. I'm not going to jump in their comments and criticize. If I would ever jump in a comment, it would be to question or talk to the person directly if I can. It's just, I, it's just so, not only is it like rude and, you know, disrespectful, you just, it, it's like, where do you even get off doing that? Like what, position you actually think you're in to be questioning this person that does this for a career and you know has 30 times more the experience yeah. than you it's yeah. insane yeah. it's it's crazy i just i just can't understand like where they're coming from you know? just i don't know unless like yeah no. delusion yeah delusion delusion is what it is delusion it's just, but yeah and the studies thing like i don't know i like like obviously like i'm not i'm not like super optimal but i do like you know studies science like it, it is good uh, do you know you know Dr. Mike, right? Mike. Yeah, I know Mike. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like for his video, for example, like the science-based stuff. I watch a lot of that. I like that. But the best thing for me that I like, how I like learning is, and I think is the best way to learn, especially in bodybuilding, it's just like personal experience, right? Like, or like what you learn in your own journey. Obviously, getting a coach is good. You can learn through that. But just like what works for you, what works for your body is like very 
first of all, it's very individual dependent, right? But learning that from, it's just so, like, it's just better to do, like, from your own personal experience, in my opinion. I don't know. I just... Yeah, people think everything is is generalized. Honestly, I don't know if it's like an IQ thing. I don't know what it is because a lot of it seems like it's just the lack of ability to critically think because these guys like like Mike, I like Joe a lot because Joe speaks within like a lot of nuance and understands. I don't know if you know Joe Bennett, mm -hmm. high coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he's a uh, he's great. I always, I always smile when I watch those videos because when he was talking, it's like that's exactly something I would say and I, I want to get him on here. But with these guys like Mike and these science based guys, these optimal guys, the thing is like people have taken this word as so I'm science-based and use that as a way to make themselves feel superior. And a lot of these people in the science-based community, it's not about science anymore. It's filled with people who don't understand science. It's just filled with people who are dogmatic about reading the conclusion or abstract of a study and trying to take that as a black and white answer. So if I say that we can keep protein synthesis higher throughout the day, by having more meal frequency, and especially as you gain more tissue, you know that you're going to be uh, that that level is going to drop off faster because we're trying to reach homeostasis. People can't comprehend that because they don't understand the ph physiology, and there's not an exact study to show that because we don't have studies on people with a ton of fucking mass either. So it's just like the study that shows the average guy is not going to have a significant difference between spreading their protein between you know three or four meals. That's not applicable app applicable to the guy that's you know my size. It's completely different. It changes mm -hmm. as we get more developed and they don't have the actual understanding. And then they watch these videos where guys may not understand the, the nuance between things, especially in short form content. And they take those answers as black and white because there's only so much you could say in short form content too. But then if we got somebody like Mike or, you know, these other science based guys in a conversation, which I have done on here on podcast, mm -hmm. they, and you under and you start to talk about context and how things change. It's not, it's not that simple. Right. There's, it's everything is circumstantial. Everything is individual dependent. Like, should you use the bands on hack squats? Yes or no? Well, you know, it is good. But then people will say it's bad. Well, why is it bad? Well, it depends on these factors and why you should implement it and understanding why. And people will just people, I, I think a lot of people just don't actually want to learn. They just want a simple answer to regurgitate again to make themselves feel smarter and say that I'm science based. When reality is you just don't understand science. You're just trying to use that as a way to make yourself seem intelligent to impress social media. Yeah, and, and that's a. Uh... That's where like one of the big, down I think one of the big downfalls of like, not downfalls of the social media, one of the main like things that kind of drive that, especially like in social media is like short form educational content on social media is terrible. Like, because there's, it's so much, it goes so much deeper than that. Like, especially on things that are like complicated, obviously, right? Like, should you use bands? How you like warm up? How you should do, how you should like, eat right it's like you can't just like you're not gonna go to like a like a science lecture in a college class sit for five minutes take the information and leave right you got to have the whole context you got to have the whole class you like this is why long form content that's educational on this is just better because you can take everything and the, all the context around it all the circumstances that can play into it instead of just a one minute clip of somebody saying that doing a lat pull down is better than pull ups because of this it's just you know, long content is just better. I know everybody is, there's a lot to it. People don't want to learn. They just want to get the quick answers or they want to read a quick study. You know, we can look at a study that says fasted cardio is going to make a significant difference in fat loss, you know, for the majority of individuals. It's not going to really it's going to have a negligible, negligible difference. So now people are going to take that and say, there's no reason to do fast cardio. You're just doing that because of preference. Well, no, because you also don't understand that for one, we can utilize fat loss agents to help assist with lipolysis during that time frame, making it uh, even more effective, which, you know, obviously, if you understand the mechanisms behind that, you don't understand how that works. But you can also, you know, say if we are in a bulk pushing food, that's going to help assist with our appetite in the morning to help push more food. We can also say that's going to drive blood glucose lower. So you're going to be more sensitive after that meal, after doing cardio. So you're going to have better nutrient uh, utilization after doing that fast cardio. And that could be more effective for that. That intended goal so it's not just as simple as saying you know it's the same for everybody and then we don't have studies on people that are actually getting stage lean either so maybe it makes a, a negligible difference but that negligible difference that one percent will matter when you're on stage mm -hmm. so it's it's people don't it's yeah. i mean we could go on we could go about this yeah, yeah. go on about this forever it's just uh it's just crazy i i think a lot of people just need to do more due diligence and actually take the time to do research and try to understand all aspects take things with a grain of salt not try to argue with people and really just be a sponge. You'll realize what you thought now, like what you think now, five years from now, you know, maybe you're right about some stuff, but you're going to learn substantially more and have a much bigger perspective on things, how to approach training, injury prevention, mm -hmm. things you really shouldn't be doing, things that really aren't worth it. Is you doing implementing this 
at this point in your day, you know, really worth the benefits that you're going to get. It, it, the list goes on. So yeah, no, and you understand that, though. Yeah, well, somewhat, yeah. <laughs> but that that the thing I said earlier also goes to like people are also and this is like this is kind of not off topic of social media, but people are also like super addicted to that, you know, short form content. Obviously, people don't want to sit, watch, and learn. Yeah, people don't really want to watch. It's an the hour, dopamine. Yeah, an hour long video of. Even if it's something that interests them. And honestly, I sometimes find myself like, you know, not wanting like I've watched like an hour long video on something even that I found enjoyable. I'd rather just sometimes just get on my phone, scroll for like fucking an hour and do nothing. I do that. Yeah, I do that. And, that, and that's just like a, not a good thing. Obviously, people are just addicted to like micro videos that last a minute. They can't just sit down and watch something. It's Yeah, no. The, the, one of the primary reasons why I started this podcast was to help people learn in longer form content because I understand the the downfall, like the, the problems with short form content. And you'll see on some of these videos, people will comment, you know, why don't you like put the video chapters, put the video chapters. And I don't put video chapters for a reason because I want people to listen to the entire thing and not be able to just skip to a section and hear that and then get the answer they want and then leave and not listen to anything that was said prior to that or around that that could have explained more context where they'd have a better understanding because that that's the same thing as short form content now you just want a quick answer to the solution you don't want to hear all the context and actually learn and the purpose of this is for you to actually sit through it absorb everything we're saying so that you have the whole picture and have a better understanding you're able to learn more but you know people your video chapter give me video time skip stamps. right there yeah. what does fast cardio do that's it yeah time stamp, time stamps yeah it's it's just they want that dopamine quick answer yeah. you know and that's you're never gonna learn if you're like that you have to be patient you have to be patient and you have to focus and sit there and want to learn then this is where again it comes back to the genuine interest in training and bodybuilding because when you have that you won't have a problem with that you don't want to sit and get a quick answer you want to actually understand how these things work well why does fasting cardio do that why does nutrient timing matter you know like the, you want to have a deeper understanding and you're not going to just skip around and look for a quick answer because you understand it's probably not that simple mm, yeah 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 but no, that, that just goes on this is what it is like that's holes, say. the whole social yeah, media so. thing scrolling it's, yeah do you try to stay off social media a lot i'd like to say yes but no i, I no you don't i'm definitely addicted to my phone or like to just scrolling 100%. It's not something I want to be, but it's just like, you know, mm -hmm. it's just so easy. You know, it's gone, gone, gone the best of us. Do you, uh, you say you try, try to go to bed earlier sometimes when you're like, you like go to bed mm -hmm. at night or something. Do you try to stay off of your phone when you're like, go to bed? Do you do that at all? Or you'll be on your phone so you fall asleep? Uh, no, I'll, I'll get off my phone. Yeah. Bodybuilding is still first. I, I like, Oh, it's time to go to bed. It's off my phone. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I have a problem with it. Like, you know, like, I got an hour to kill and I got nothing to do. I just got done with my homework. What am I going to do? Oh, well, I'm just going to scroll. But if it's time to, like, go to bed, go to the gym, I'll be off my phone. I'm no problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You know, reducing screen time before bed definitely will help you fall asleep. A lot of guys will sit there. Oh, I can't fall asleep. But they're sitting there staring at their screen like this the whole oh, night. Yeah, and they wonder why. But hey, man, I feel like all right. We've we've covered we've covered a good yeah. a good amount here. Again, before before you wrap it up, any any last words? Any anything you got to plug? Um, last words. I don't even know, man. <laughs> all right. Well, Just, there you have yeah, it. He doesn't know. even know. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Course, uh, make sure you guys like this video. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you on the next episode of Brass Tech Bodybuilding. <laughs>